Hey guys, my name is Cedric. Welcome to my channel Vertigo117 and today we'll be talking about preventing algae as well as getting rid of them. Let's get into it. Okay, so first off what we need to know uh, algae is a plant and what plants need uh, they need sunlight they need nutrition and they need water uh, not water we have an abundance of that and uh, now what you need to know as well 100% algae free is not possible you need to have a bit of algae uh, for the fish it's a good nutrition for the fish uh, they like to eat it and uh, it's also a good hiding space for uh, small bugs that eat uh, mosquito larvae and uh, all that. So try not to get rid of every algae in your pond, guys. It's uh, very good for your pond, very healthy. Okay, so first off, I want to talk about prevention of uh, algae because um, if you do have algae, uh, just getting rid of the algae won't stop. Uh, the problem. You need to have uh, a backup plan uh, to prevent algae as well once you get rid of the algae or else they will just come back. So um, and to get a bit more um, into details you kind of need to know the nitrogen cycle but uh, I won't go over that because uh, there are a lot of videos out there about the nitrogen cycle I could make one if you want me to make one uh, just post it in the comments downstairs uh, down at the bottom and uh, I will do so no problem with pleasure okay so I'll put on the right hand side of the screen uh, a few listings and uh, I'll first go over them and then uh, I'll add them while we go along one of the key things that is uh, mostly forgotten is aeration guys it's uh, very important and aeration can come in uh, three, diff three different ways if you want to you have a uh, waterfalls then you have um, fountains I don't have a fountain I don't really like fountains but it's uh, everyone's uh, own thing and then there are aeration stones now mine you can't see very well there you see a few bubbles coming up on the surface and uh, here on the left underneath the plant there's a aeration stone as well and what that does actually it steers up the water and while it steers up the water there's a, a balance between oxygen and so the co2 and the oxygen will try to find the balance it's easier when the water is stirred up than when it's all flat uh, surface so you need to take that in consideration and just a waterfall or air stones in my opinion it's not enough you need to have a few uh, oxyg oxygenating plants I have this one is one that you can put in the water as well that one is one as well don't put too much oxygenating plants guys because in the day they make oxygen but at night time they, they produce co2 so your fish might try to jump out of the pool the pond sorry in uh, the night time so be careful search for a good balance not too much a second problem that is uh, well known is uh, overfeeding the fish now I usually feed the fish once a day and I don't give a big amount of food the goal here is uh, so that the fish scrape off the algae from the rocks from the sidings uh, even from the plants Okay, so third up, it's been a while since I've done it, I think a week. Uh, I try to keep all the 
leave decay and um, plants that fall into the water to a bare minimum. So as you can see, I have here one that's in the water. I have to cut that out. I have a few here I am going to cut as well. Because as you can see, they're starting to decay in the water. And that gives more ammonia to the water, so more chances for algae to grow. With my uh, nymphaeas, when they get a bit brownish like this, now this is, might be a bit too early, but they become all yellow and then they start to get brown spots. And then I, I just snap them off and I get rid of them in my compost. All that to keep the ammonia down in the pond. Now I know if you have a big pond, now I have a small pond. If you have a big pond, you don't have to do everything in one day. You can say, uh, I'll do a corner in uh, this day, today, and uh, in, in two days I'll do the other corner. And if you keep up with it, it's not a lot of work and uh, it helps me relax again. Uh, you're playing with nature, having having the sound of the waterfall, the fish uh, by your side, uh, it relaxes me uh, and I hope for you it will do the same. Okay, so one way to keep a lot and then I say the most parts of the algae away is planting a lot of water plants, guys. Uh, I would advise you to have one third of your pond with plants. Now, not everyone has a lot of space and uh, neither do I, I have a small pond and uh, I use hanging baskets to free space for the fish. See, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five hanging baskets. Uh, I even use the intake bay to put some plants and in the waterfall as well. And then I made a sort of, uh, how should I say, hydroponic system with airlift. You see the tube here. You can even see the bubbles come up. So it's airlifted, the water comes up, goes through the tubing, through all the roots of the plants, and then it comes out right at the other side. And that gets a lot of um, nitrates out of the water. The algae grow on nitrates. So a lot of plants, less algae. Uh, don't count nymphaeas. They do not take a lot of nutrients out of the water. Try to go for fast growing plants. They take a lot of nutrients out of the water and uh, they're great. What you can do as well, I need to find them. Um, water hyacinths, they're not that common here in Belgium. So I would like to have them. And they also they float on the water and they, uh, so that there's not a lot of sunlight going into the pond. When you plant in planter basket, guys, that's uh, my next point. When you put in plants, try to get them out of the soil. So rinse off the roots, put them in pea gravel or uh, these are hydro, um, hydro granulates. I've put them in pea gravel. Um, you can put them in lava rock. You can go all sorts of way, but avoid soil. It's uh, more nutrients for uh, in the pond that are released more nutrients, more algae. Okay, so you actually need a way for the ammonia to be broken down to nitrates and then it will be broken down again to nitrates. That All of that is done by bacteria and you need to find a lot of surface for those beneficial bacteria to grow on. So I'd advise you to put stones on the bottom of your pond, um, put in rocks, uh, you can even use 
a nitrate filter that I call it, that I made here, the uh, tubing. And in this tubing, uh, there are a lot of hydro balls. Uh, try to have a spot where it's dark as well as light. Beneficial bacteria will grow on everything inside your pond. So they will grow on the sidings of your pond, on the gravel at the bottom, all the rocks in it. And what I try to do is have space in sunlight, so that's just in the pond, and uh, space for benef beneficial bacteria to grow on out of the sunlight. And that will be in my nitrate filter. Uh, there are two different strings of uh, bacteria and they do a great job. And another factor is, as we said in the beginning, sunlight. Uh, algae grow a lot harder when there's a lot of direct sunlight on the pond. Uh, they feed from the uh, sunlight. And uh, normally I have a uh, shade cloth over it. But because I see the grass, uh, the rain doesn't fall on my grass, so I had to take it out. And we had a lot of rain last days. But I have one like this, triangular. And normally it sits from this point here to the other one over there. And then I hook it to uh, the sidings there and it will cover up my pond so that there is more shade. Also next year I will put in more sunflowers at the siding of the pond because they give a lot of natural shade and uh, that's very good guys. Okay and the last factor that I think is uh, very helpful to know is when you take a test try looking for the KH. If the KH is too low in the pond, I, in my opinion, uh, there's a lot more algae. So I can see when my KH is getting down, uh, my carbonate hardness, the algae start to grow more. And uh, it's been a while now since I checked it. Normally I check it every week. I think it's been two weeks now. I'll have to do a checkup because there are some string algae. I'm not sure if you can see it very clearly. Some string algae that are coming through. So I'll have to check the KH level of the pond. Okay, so these are some factors that you really need take in consideration. Um, I had pea soup. Uh, my water was green, very green. I'll try to show you some footage of it. And I couldn't even see the bottom anymore. I couldn't see which, which, which fish was which. And what I did at that moment, uh, I got rid of the algae through uh, my UV lamp. So I have a UV lamp here but it doesn't run anymore. So I used the UV light to get rid of the algae, the floating algae that was in the pond, and I added a chemical, but the lowest dose as possible uh, to speed up the, the process a bit. But my UV lamp is not working anymore and it's been like two months, I think. Yeah, around then about two months that the, the UV filter isn't working anymore. I just unplugged the, the uh, UV filter and I don't run it. I don't like to have uh, things that cost a lot. Shouldn't cost too much to have fish and enjoy the fish. UV light consumes a lot of electricity. Uh, the chemicals as well. If you don't uh, put in the preventions, um, your algae will come back again like nothing. So it's good to get rid of the big algae by using uh, chemicals or uh, UV lights. I would prefer the UV lights than the chemicals 
I'm not too into chemicals for my fish. I like everything biologic. And I'd say try your best, get rid of the algae, scoop them out. Uh, string algae as well as beard algae. I think you're best to add a bit of chemicals and then try to scoop as much of them out uh, before you put in the chemicals to speed up the process a bit. Uh, floating algae, that's uh, also a pain in the bum because you can't uh, scoop them out. You literally have to filter them out. Uh, filter it out or use a UV lamp. Quick recap, when you get rid of the algae because you have an algae infested pond, do so, but take in consideration all the preventions. You can start to make all the preventions while you're busy uh, getting rid of the algae. So it's not that you have to wait for that, uh, you don't need to wait until all the algae are gone before putting in the prevention measures. Um, put on a a cloth, a shade cloth, uh, put in more plants, all that you can do while you're treating your water. Um, what else can you do? Check the water parameters, very important. Add aeration to the pond, a few uh, aeration plants are good, not too much, a few are good. And I'd say go for water hyacinths, very good. Take, a lot, take out a lot of nutrition, very good growers, um, fast growers as well. And uh, have fun while doing it, guys. It's uh, a nice process, it's very satisfying to see the changes going along. Um, if you do uh, change anything to your pond, please. Uh, Put it down in the description. Uh, I would like to see, uh, to know what you did to it, and uh, if it helped at all. That was it for this week's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next week I'll be doing a maintenance on my nitrate filter. So if you want to see that, I'll see you next week. And hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Hope you learned something about it as well and subscribe if you're not subscribed it yet subscribe hit that bell notification to be notified every time i upload a video thanks guys so much for speaking with me till the end hope you enjoyed the video check out this next video as well as consider subscribing to my channel please leave a like that would help me out thank you guys see you take care